Yeah, let's give Diana a round of applause of course, before she begins. Thank you. So I'm not going to talk about combinatorics. I know um, it's probably the most fun to talk about, but for me, it wasn't my, my best topic, to be very fair. And I thought about um, what my favorite Olympiad problem is, and I had a lot of Olympiad problems that I enjoyed. But then I thought about what problem would be like most suitable to present right here. And I thought about a problem six from an old IMO. More exactly, IMO 1988, problem six. And the reason I choose this problem is because its history is very interesting. Um, why? Because when it was proposed, none of the six members of the committee of the IMO was able to solve this problem. In the short list, it was with two asterisks in front of it, which meant it's very, very, very hard. And then they tried to solve the problem. Four people who are experts in number theory locked themselves inside a room for six hours and tried to prove this problem, but none of them was able to. However, they decided to give the problem in the contest. What happened in the contest? 11 people solved it. So let's see how the problem looks like. We have two positive integers. And we know they satisfy the following divisibility relation. So AB plus 1 divides A squared plus B squared. And what the problem wants for, from us is to prove that this is actually going to be a perfect square. So for all the pairs that satisfy this, we have to prove that this number, which by the way we know it's an integer from the divisibility condition, is a perfect square. And First of all, I have to tell you, we cannot come up with a form of these numbers. Like say, okay, if this happens, then A has to be of a certain form and B has to be of a certain form and then compute them. I mean, I think there's a solution based on that, but it's pretty ugly and the calculations are pretty bad. So this is why the problem was challenging. For example, a general form of this would be if A is equal to, this is just an example, 8m cubed and B is equal to 2m, I think. Then these are going to satisfy it. Uh, we can check really fast. A divides 64m to the 6 plus 4m squared. Yes, because this is 4m squared times 60m to the fourth plus one. And indeed, when we take this over this, we're gonna obtain 4m squared, which is a perfect square. So we see that, for example, for every m and for every solution of this form, this thing is gonna be a perfect square. But as I said, we cannot say, okay, these are the solutions, because the general form of the solutions is very hard to come up with. So, <clears throat> What happened is in the contest, the contestants came up with the method that we now call Vienna jumping. This method appeared before in some papers, but this was, I think, the first time it was used in an Olympiad. So what is Vienna jumping? <clears throat> we know the Vieira's equations, right? So when we have this sort of an equation. And x1 and x2 are the roots of it. Then, of course, we know that their sum is minus b over a, and that their product is c over a. So this is some trivial math when we look at this equation, right? But right now, the interesting part is that we're going to be able to come up with a solution to this using just these two equations right here, which is very, very impressive. So we just know that this is a perfect square, right? So let us assume 
that this number right here is not a perfect square. So suppose a squared plus b squared over ab is not a perfect square. And I'm going to call, oh sorry, ab plus 1. And I'm going to call it k. So it is not a perfect square. All right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite it. I'll multiply everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange everything that's here to look like the equation over there, the degree 2 polynomial. So it's going to look like a squared minus kb times a plus b squared minus k is equal to 0. OK? All right. So basically, when we have this equality, we know that a is a root of, and we have x squared minus kb times x plus b squared minus k is equal to 0, right? So a has to be one of the roots of this equation. But this equation has two roots, and we know the equations that link them. So we know that if we look at this, then using the formulas that you all know, we're going to obtain the two equations of this solution satisfy that their sum is kb and their product is b squared minus k, right? And again, as I said, a is a root of them. So we can simply assume that this first root is actually equal to a. So what we're going to get, we're going to get that this right here has two roots. One of them is a and one of them is x2. And what we know is that a plus x2 is kb, and a times x2 is b squared minus k. All right? So, again, I started from a general solution, a and b, and I denote this number right here, which I know is an integer by k. Starting from this, I reorganized everything, and I know that for this particular solution, a is a root, but also we have one more root that satisfies these equations. In particular, we can rewrite x2, and x2 is going to be kb minus a, which is an integer, right? Because kb and a are integers. So we have an integer solution. What I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to prove, I'll just give you an insight of what's going to happen. I'm going to prove that if a, b is a solution, then x2 and b is also a solution. So basically, I'll just jump from a solution to another one. And then what I'm going to use is that I'm going to use the thing that I can take a certain pair. I can take a pair, a, b, such that this sum has minimum value across all the solutions. So again, I fixed this k, which I suppose is not a perfect square. And among all of the integers that have this property, I take the ones a and b such that a plus b is minimum. What's going to happen is that if k is not a perfect square, then this number right here, x2 and b, is going to be another solution, but it's going to contradict this. This is what we're going to prove. So we start from this, which I say it's minimum, but I obtain this one too, which is going to contradict the minimality. Why does it contradict the minimality? First of all, I said that x2 is kb minus a, which is, of course, an integer. If I prove it's a positive integer, then I prove that this is also a solution of a squared plus b squared over a b plus 1 is equal to k. <clears throat> now the question is why it's positive, right? So let's look at the other thing. We had the other relation, which was 
x2 is b squared minus k over a. So right now I just need to prove this is positive, right? In order for it to be positive, I just need k to be less than b squared. But once again, look at the form of k. k is a squared plus b squared over a b plus 1. Um, I think I can, also, I can also assume an order of a and b. I don't quite remember which one we can take to be bigger to be for our solution to be right. But let me just check. I think we can just take a is greater than b. Let's check it like this. So also we order them. Their order doesn't matter, right? We're working with the symmetric relation. So let's just suppose that a is greater or equal to b. And so k is this number. And I want to prove that it's less than b squared. So basically all that I need to prove is that a squared plus b squared over a b plus 1 is less than b squared. This is equivalent to a squared plus b squared is less than a b cubed plus b squared. This just disappears. It's equivalent to a is less than b cubed. So I think I'll just change it. I'll just say a is less than b. OK, so one more time, we obtain that this solution right here is a positive solution. It's an integer. So x2 is going to be a positive integer. This means that x2 and b is another solution to this. So right now comes our big end, because if we prove again that x2 plus b contradicts this minimality argument, then basically we're just going to be done, right? So right now, by the way, um, we can also observe that k is not a perfect square. The thing is that k is going to be less or equal to b squared if we just compute everything. Just trust me, um, there are some computations here. But k is going to be less or equal to b squared. And this comes our supposition. We suppose that k is not a perfect square. So basically k is different than b squared. This is why it's strictly greater than zero, OK? If k would be a perfect square, then actually this would be zero, and this wouldn't contradict our solution, because this wouldn't be a valid solution if the first number here is zero, OK? So this is where k is not a perfect square comes. And um, another way of proving that um, x2 is greater than zero is also by, I'm just going to show you the other way, is also by looking where x2 came from. So x2 is a root of this right here. So I just can plug it in. x2 squared minus kb times x2 plus b squared minus k is 0. Of course, it works because x2 is another root of this. So I can just obtain that x2 squared plus um, b squared, actually. I'm just going to write it like this. And then I'm going to move the other ones, kb times x2 plus k on the other side. This is k times bx2 plus 1. OK, this is clearly positive, sum of squares. This is positive. So this also has to be positive, right? So in order for this to happen, because x2 is not 0, as I said, because k cannot be b squared, is not a perfect square. So x2 is not 0. So basically what's going to happen is that x2 has to be positive in order for bx2 plus 1 to be positive. So this is where we obtain that x2 is a positive integer. And as I said, x2 and b is another solution. We have two positive integers that satisfy x2 squared plus b squared over x2 times b plus 1 is equal to k. So right now, let me just, I think it would have been wiser to take a is greater than b just for the, the finish. Because right now I'm just going to prove that x2 is less than a. Why? It's going to be very easy because x2 is b squared minus k over a. This is less than a. 
because it's equivalent to b squared minus k less than a squared. And if I assume that a is greater than b, this is why I needed to assume an order, this is going to be true. So what we obtain is that x2 is less than a, is a positive integer, and so x2 plus b is a solution that has the sum of the two components less than a plus b. But we assumed that a plus b is the solution that satisfies this minimality. So here comes our contradiction. k has to be a perfect square. And as I said, perfect square. And as I said, this contradiction arises because x, uh, because sorry, k is different than b squared right here. So x2 cannot be 0. And this is why right there, we, we obtain that x2 has to be positive. If k is a perfect square, then k can be b squared x2 can be 0, and x2 and b is not going to be another solution, and it's not going to contradict anything. So yeah, that's it. This is how we can use Viera's equations to come up with a wonderful solution to a very complicated problem. Wow. That's it.